Hello people this is Dr Muskan this side and today I am going to discuss one case that is all about pneumomediastinum this case was something new for me initially when i was studying this case <coughs> i made the diagnosis of simple pneumothorax with subcutaneous emphysema but later i discovered some good findings on x-ray and it led me to the diagnosis of pneumomediastinum and later i came to know that one of the complication of pneumomediastinum is pneumothorax so let's start with the journey of this beautiful case but before that let me orient you towards the topic of pneumomediastinum pneumo word stands for air and mediastinum word stands for a space which is in the chest that lies between sternum and your spinal cord and between your lungs and pneumomediastinum is also known as mediastinal emphysema there's a beautiful classical triad of this disease one is your thoracic pain other is your subcutaneous emphysema and third is your dyspnea other clinical features which is present in pneumomediastinum is dysphonia dysphagia neck pain or swelling torticollis abdominal pain and low grade fever what is the pathology in pneumomediastinum basically there is a maclean's effect in which you can see if it is visible to you there is increased alveolar rupture when alveolar rupture occurs gas tracks through the interstitium along the bronchovascular sheets towards pneumomedias towards mediastinum gas dissects to the hilum through the loose mediastinal fascia into the tissue of the mediastinum neck chest wall and upper limb it results in subcutaneous emphysema uh, air goes out from here leaks and goes to the neck and you can literally when you will palpate the patient like this you will feel that bubbles are bursting and when um, means the, i saw this patient last week and today also she's here in the icu itself when i palpated her um even in the chest wall there were bubbles which were bursting her from this side this side full neck so yeah this is the classical finding of subcutaneous emphysema now on physical examination there was hemen signs that was present which is which tells us there is a diagnostic crunching sound which is synchronous with the heartbeat over the pericardium or the cardiac apex and left sternal border muffling of the heart sounds and subcutaneous emphysema of the chest wall or neck now what is the diagnostic criteria in the patient of pneumomediastinum this was something a pick up point actually there was continuous diaphragm sign what is continuous diaphragm sign air is present ab um, uh, above the diaphragm and below the lung in the chest x ray so it feet is visible to you you can see this diagram this is your lung this is your diaphragm and between these two white wings there's a little space between that is your air which tells us that it is continuous diaphragm sign now what is the management of pneumomediastinum they we administer uh, oxygen to the patient which absorbs air by six fold we give anti tussips for cough and analgesics for pain complications in the patient of pneumomediastinum is cardiac tamponade and its management is vats or thoracotomy and other complication is pneumothorax and its management is icd now let me take you towards the case just give me a second yeah here is 48 year old female who has came to emergency today morning 5:30 am with chief complaints of shortness of breath since 3 am today associated with swelling sweating sorry cough since 2 days with expectoration on arrival abcs was done airway was patent there were no signs of airway obstruction such as dyspnea or dysphagia stridor difficulty breathing in lying or sitting position hoarseness of voice choking holding neck during difficult breathing on breathing assessment respiratory rate was 24 per minute spo2 was 88% on room air 
and when we have given 6 liter of oxygen by mass spo2 was 99 percent so patient is tachypneic because i feel that respiratory rate is 16 to 18 per minute which is normal in this it is 24 per minute that means patient is tachypneic and hypoxic so she was given oxygen support to maintain spo2 o2 saturation on circulatory assessment pulse rate was 90 per minute which is normal bp was 166 by 90 mm hg which is which shows she is hypertensive sensorium was alert on arrival gcs score was 15 by 15 that is e4 v5 m6 hopi patient was apparently asymptomatic five days back when she started experiencing a cough with uh, which was productive in nature whitish in color it was intermittent in nature, increased by biomass exposure because she works on Chula for from past 20 years. Also associated with seasonal variations that is more in winter since past 5 years. Patient also complains of shortness of breath since 4 days. It increases on exertion and relieves on lying down associated with palpitations, chest swelling, sweating and MMRC grade 4. Now, what is MMRC grade 4? She was not able to leave the house and breathing. Uh, she was not able to breathe properly when dressing and undressing. Negative history. There was negative history of chest pain, fever, dust allergy, MDI, DPI, inhaler use. What is MDI and DPI? That is meter dose inhaler and dry powder inhaler. Steroid use, abuse. Uh, why we take the history of steroid abuse? Because... Uh, if we see any abnormal weight gain or puffiness of face so we ask the patient have you taken the steroids before for any of the disease a negative history of nebulization hemoptysis there are no comorbidities such as type 2 diabetes mellitus hypertension or thyroid there are no addictions such as smoking alcohol tobacco chewing and there was no history there was negative history for orthopnea and pnd now what is orthopnea and what is pnd orthopnea is when the patient is lying down is she able to breathe properly or not pnd is patient has slept at the night but she's waking up there is some air hunger she is going near the window and taking the air that is pnd it is all it, it is paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea okay what is the past medical history she has history of tuberculosis 20 years back which was extra pulmonary tuberculosis she took medications for nine months and eptb was microbiologically confirmed and i want to tell you very nice point here one is your pulmonary tb other is your extra pulmonary tb pulmonary tb is only the thing which is in the lungs अगर कोई भी चीज प्लूरा में भी हो रही है मतलब विस्ट्रल और प्लूरल पेराइटल कैविटी पेराइटल लेयर के बीच में प्लूरा प्लूरल कैविटी है तो वो भी एक्स्ट्रा पल्मनरी टीबी में काउंट होता है एंड इसको एक्चुअल में प्लूरल फ्यूजन हुआ था और वहीं पर उसको नोच बने थे दैट इज एक्स्ट्रा पल्मनरी टीबी दैट्स व्हाई आई एम मेंशनिंग दिस पॉइंट राइट नाउ हियर द सेकंड नेगेटिव हिस्ट्री पास्ट मेडिकल हिस्ट्री ऑफ दिस पेशेंट इज शी हैज हिस्ट्री ऑफ प्लूरल इफ्यूजन it has changed to septations and loculations that is there was massive pleural effusion so icd was done 20 years back when massive pleural effusion occurs we do intercostal drainage instead of tap agar kisi ko pleural effusion hua hai what you are going to do you are doing going to do pleural tap you are going to remove the fluid through that but if it is massive pleural effusion what happens in the pathology it changes into septations and loculations and you have to do, do the management with the help of icd rather than pleural tap i hope this is also something new to learn for you the third past medical history of the same patient was she has history of past eight days hospital admission and she was diagnosed with pneumothorax and they have put the icd that is intercostal drainage past surgical history there is history of hysterectomy two and a half years back both eyes cataract surgery four and a half years left eye and two years right eye मतलब इतने टाइम पर ये दोनों सर्जरीज हुई थी पर्सनल हिस्ट्री शी इज वेजिटेरियन बाय डाइट शी हैज नॉर्मल स्लीप हैबिट्स शी हैज नॉर्मल बाउल एंड ब्लैडर हैबिट्स शी हैज नो एडिक्शंस ऑफ स्मोकिंग अल्कोहल एंड टोबैको on examination decubitus of the patient the patient was sitting comfortably on bed she is cooperative talking nicely 
but she is maintaining 93% SpO2 on 40% PEEP on 40% FiO2 PEEP is 8 tidal volume is 450 ml and she was on HFNC that is high flow nasal cannula vitals of this patient she was hypertensive there was tachycardia and she was afebrile there was mild parallel which was present rest all were negative that was icterus clubbing cyanosis lymphopathy and edema systemic examination on inspection there was a previous injury of icd inserted back eight days back in some other hospital color of the skin is normal shape of the chest barrel shaped chest which suggests us of obstructive emphysema <coughs> symmetry of the chest is asymmetrical movement of the chest movement is restricted on the left side it is not symmetrically moving uh, respiratory rate was 13 per minute which is normal type of respiration is thoraco abdominal and to your acknowledgement i want to tell you that male has to me abdominal ah, thoracic yeah. is normal and if female has to me thoraco abdominal is normal mm. on yeah. palpation temperature was afebrile tenderness was absent expansion of the chest was on the right side more than left side position of the trachea it was shifted to the right side intercostal space was reduced tactile vocal formitis was on the right side compared to the left side on percussion there was hyper resonant node which was found on auscultation there was reduced ear entry there were bubbles bursting sounds and it is suggestive of subcutaneous emphysema investigation CBC picture shows a little reduced platelets that was 1,39,000. KFT, LFT was good. No ECG was normal. Sinus rhythm, urine, uh, routine microscopy was normal. HCV, HIV, 1, 2, HBS antigen was non-reactive. Chest X-ray is suggestive of subcutaneous emphysema and pneumothorax. ABG shows respiratory acidosis and... The diagnosis at last is pneumothorax with subcutaneous emphysema. Why? Because on the first day, the X-ray has showed the continuous diaphragm sign, which was suggestive of your pneumomediastinum. But on the second day, to the same patient, when I saw the X-ray, there was some consolidation on the right side. There was some collapse of the lung on the right side that shows that there was pneumothorax and the complication of pneumomediastinum is pneumothorax so yeah that's all i really really enjoyed learning on this case because i learned so many points it was a dopaminergic feel i hope you have also enjoyed listening to the history of the patient and i hope you have also learned something good something new that's all dr muskan mansal is signing off now